Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're the Americas team. Uh, we're representing Brazil, Panama, Peru, and the US. So very international. Um, I think we can each introduce ourselves very quickly. Uh, I'm Julian. I'm an international lawyer. I live in Brazil. Uh, and I work in the uh, marketing area between uh, the legal and marketing in the area of intellectual property. Uh, firstly, I want to say thanks to Tessa and Legal Creatives for the challenge. It was a, a really interesting project. I can say that we had, we all agreed that it was really worthwhile and that we learned so much about privacy and data protection and that it was a great experience. What I'm going to do first, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we framed the question uh, or how, maybe how we reframed the question at the very beginning. Uh, afterwards, uh, my colleague Deneen is going to talk about uh, the relationship of our project to GDPR. Then um, Camelin is going to talk a little bit about our research process and how we came to our aha moment. And also, um, then uh, we're going, um, Antonella is going to talk a little bit about our persona. And then we're going, to, Melissa is going to present at the end our solution in a, in a little video that we've done. Okay. So, and at the very end, we're going to obviously open to questions to the audience. Okay. So at the start of this challenge, what we did, we just dove into the world of app privacy. A lot of us already had significant experience uh, uh, with privacy law in some capacity and um, with GDPR and other, other jurisdictions, but there were still loads of new surprises in terms of what we found. Uh, the first thing we really observed was that Apple had taken a huge leap in terms of what it had already done. And um, they had really reinvented um, privacy and security. Suddenly it was possible to follow clearly when apps use your camera, um, when they use your mic, it's more easier for users to limit uh, uh, the access to their photos and location, and things like that. Uh, so for us, this was a huge surprise, right? We, we were positively surprised the how, how easy this was because we hadn't actually engaged and done it for ourselves. But then we, we kind of thought, well, if we're so surprised by it, people who have already worked with privacy, worked with um, GDPR and things like that, uh, what about other users? Uh, who's actually, do they know it exists? Are they using it? So who's actually telling them about it? Uh, that was our first um, thing. Um, the other problem that we identified was uh, the, the problem that Apple is currently relying on self-reporting. Um, so in effect, none of the information that's provided to Apple is verified or vetted. So it's another problem that we, that we identified um, for, for users or for, for the whole uh, environment. Then on a more, um, I guess, uh, political way of looking at it, we also saw that the public outlook was, uh, has been changing recently a little bit towards technology companies. Uh, and we certainly observed that there's been increased scrutiny by stakeholders um, like governments, employees, and consumers on what um, tech companies are doing and how they're using our data. So um, the second thing that we found was, uh, and this was very interesting for our project, that we were seeing that there's a new wave um, of competition for businesses in privacy. So they can compete on who is doing privacy better and straight away, we saw that this could be something interesting for us to explore as part of our project. So this culture shift towards activism and accountability for users was something that we, um, we found very, very interesting. So Antonella, would you mind going to the last, uh, to the problem slide, please? Perfect. So the problem was initially framed uh, by legal creatives and um, we decided that instead of focusing on uh, the idea of enforcement uh, in our quest, uh, we would like to focus on raising awareness in incentivizing and empowering users. So the problem for us became how might we raise awareness, incentivize the veracity of apps privacy policies and empower app users via the app store. So we, we changed the question a little bit. 
And that's really it for me. I'm going to pass, up, pass over to Deneen, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, GDPR before we get more into our solution that we developed. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Hi, everyone. This is Deneen Warmington, and I'm just going to get straight to it. So uh, as Julian pointed out, we're focusing on users, right? So we know the GDPR, uh, California's Privacy <laughs> Rights Act, Brazil and a lot of other countries now are coming out with their own privacy um, laws and it's revolutionizing data privacy. But those laws all focus on what? The business owners, right? The data collectors. It gives a guideline and a framework. Um, like in particular GDPR, um, they wanna make sure that users have uh, give consent to the data being collected, right? Informed choice. So they set all of these guidelines. They even say, okay, if the data collector, the businesses like Facebook and Google, if you violate our privacy laws, we give you a fine. This is all good, but it's forgetting one thing. These data privacy laws are consumer rights, right? It's a consumer rights act. So what about the consumers? So we wanna make sure the consumers actually have an informed choice, right? They actually know what personal data is being collected. We want them to know why their personal data is collected. Now, remember, this is what the GDPR says that businesses have to do with their privacy policies. They have to let consumers know it's an informed choice. They have to let consumers know what personal data is collected, why it's collected, who it's shared with. But guess what? Users do not read privacy policies. And you know what else? The app store nutritional policy, it's not laid out in a way that really gives users an informed choice, that really lets them know what personal data is being collected. So we took, we looked at the GDPR, we looked at California's Privacy Rights Act, we looked at Brazil's, we looked at all of those, we looked at the laws that they laid out for businesses to follow, to put in their privacy policies. And we said, okay, now let's let consumers know their rights, because this is a consumer rights act. We want to give consumers the power to make an informed choice. We want to give them the power to know what data is being collected. And then we also want to give them the power to say no. We don't want users to after the fact when Google receives a fine or Facebook receives a fine from violating GDPR to say, oh, wait a minute, that's how my data is being collected. That's how it's being used. We want to cut that up. We want them to make the choice before there's a breach, before there's a fine, before there's a violation. So we use GDPR as a base to come up with how to really give users an informed choice, how to give them a power. So our main goal is one, clear choice for consumers to know what is being collected and then to uh, give them a choice, clear choice to opt out. So that's what this all is about, clear choice. So we use the GDPR as a base to put together our uh, package. And I will hand it off to Camelin and she will show you exactly what we put together. Hello, um, my name is Camelin Leone. I'm an attorney in uh, Virginia and I'm also an adjunct uh, professor at the University of Virginia Law School. So our research process, we, we started with trying to identify the stakeholders and we went through the analysis of who the snake stakeholders are and there are many there are the users there's the app developers there are governmental regulatory agencies um who else are there <laughs> well anyway those are the big ones and then we did the impact effort analysis and we first tried to focus on developers. We thought if we can find a way for developers to hold themselves to a high standard on data privacy, that would have the most impact. So we created our point of view statement. And the point of view statement was developers need to ensure data privacy to maximize demand and profits for app development and sales. Then we decided to test our point of view statement and our stakeholder by creating a survey for developers. And we had a nice little Google survey and we posted it all over our social media platforms. I even sent it to app developers that I know personally. And we got 
zero response. So we decided to go back to the drawing board and brainstorm. And so we were all sitting around talking via Zoom uh, about privacy and who really cares about privacy and what is universal. What, what is, what, who is the all in data privacy? And as we were talking, we started talking about our kids and how all of us, even if we're not parents, we have a story about kids using apps and parents being surprised to find out what data was their kids were unintentionally sharing. So that was our aha moment. And our aha moment led us to a new stakeholder, which we identify as people who care about privacy. And in that group, parents or people who take care of kids um, as our new stakeholder. And we came up with a new point of view statement Parents need to ensure data privacy because they want to keep their children safe. And then we had a brainstorm. Okay, parenthood is pretty universal, even if you're not a parent yourself. And what images or metaphors can we come up with about data privacy that are also universal? And in our brainstorming, we came up with two metaphors or two images that drove our prototype creation. And those metaphors were the stoplight, red, yellow, green, and the smoke screen. So from, from that launching point, the smoke screen, clearing back the smoke of data privacy, and then giving parents a tool as simple as a stoplight, we developed our persona. And now Antonella is going to talk about the persona. Hi everyone. Well, uh, a persona, it's a tool that we have used in our brainstorming stage, as, as Camille mentioned. Uh, and it's a tool pretty powerful because it helps to give uh, your customer segment a face and a name. And also it's a tool in, uh, in which you can, for example, uh, know what your customer wants, what they are, their hopes, uh, um, their fears, and it's really important to put a name and an age. So in this in this example, our persona is Catherine. Catherine is 35 years old. Uh, she's a mother. She has two children, John of 10 years, and Anna, who is who is 15. She's pretty concerned about uh, her data privacy, but also her son and daughter spending too much time with social media. So she's wondering if they are sharing too much information with their application. So while she was reviewing her email, she got a notification from Apple App Store, a presenter smoke screen, this grateful app, an application where she can see in a very easy and, and friendly way, uh, all the personal information, all the personal data that she and her children are sharing. So now Melissa, she's going to explain how our application works. Um, hi, hi everyone. Uh, I am Elisa, I am from Panama. I uh, am also a lawyer and I dedicate myself to uh, everything that has to do with, with policies for websites like terms of use, uh, creating a business of, of e-commerce. And I've been in legal design since last year. I think I, it's going to be almost a year since I started this journey and I'm really enjoying it. And also thank you for the opportunity. It has been a, such a, a great time with, with the team and we have learned a lot. So, uh, okay, can you put me the next, the next slide? Okay. Well, as the team was commenting, we came up with a solution of using uh, the traffic lights to create an awareness on users, okay? And how to, you know, go be, you know, after that smoke screen. When you take out the, the smoke screen of what is data privacy, uh, you, you, we came up with this solution. And something that you were asking before was how we can, how we could deal with, with, uh, with visual disabilities. Well, iPhones do have a filter 
for people with color blindness, right? But as Camille said, it's not that easy to find it. And maybe, maybe there are people that doesn't know that the iPhone has that, uh, that feature. So what is the first thing for we to, to, to come up with? I mean, it's very, it's very important when you create a prototype that you make life of the users easier. You don't have to give them a lot of cognitive load. Uh, they don't have to think a lot to use your application. And that is what we, we wanted to, to create. We wanted to create an application that were easy to use, um, ac everything accessible, everything explained. And that is my first slide. I mean, when you open your, your application, can you go back a little bit, Antonella, to just show the, the homepage of the, okay. No, the, 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 the before. Uh -huh, okay, so this is our iPhone, right? You have your iPhone, you have all your applications, and you have Smoke Screen. Smoke Screen is an application that um, that can be installed um, after you update your iPhone. And if you buy an, a new iPhone, it will it will come with it. Okay, so when you open your application, and then we go to the next slide, you will see these three red these three dots. Okay, and when you tap on each dot you will see an explanation of what, uh, of what is the meaning of each dot. So if you type, if you tap your, your red dot, you will see that it's all about your, your shared data at the moment. When you tap the yellow dot, it, is, uh, it, it indicates the limited data that you have. And the green dot means that is no data shared. So let's see a little example. And we're gonna go to that. Okay. Um, another great feature that our application have is that you can um, you can turn on your notifications. So you could, you will receive a monthly report about how is the status of your applications regarding data privacy. Okay, so you can just click on the bell and you will receive a monthly report. Okay, and then in the other slide we have an example. For example, WhatsApp. You have WhatsApp and you open your application and you will see the details, the dots. So of course, red means that you're sharing a lot of information, right? So you click on the red dot and uh, you will see your settings, the application links to your settings and you can see which are on. So you have the, the choice to choose. You have, you have the opportunity to choose which settings you want to, to keep on. So you are choosing which type of data you are you are sharing with, with that application. Okay. And if you just turn off your, your settings, you will see that the dots will change automatically to green. And that is like actually our main this is like a you know like the whole idea to create a, an application that was user friendly that was uh, easy to, to understand, that um, people could make choices a, in a very easy way. And well, we're gonna have a little video so you can see how it would work in the real life. <laughs>
Wow, well done, everybody. Well done to Antonella, Camilene, Denine, Julian, and Melissa. What a journey, what a journey has been for, for you all.